Hey guys, in this video, we are going to create our realistic skin shader. Let's go to our hyper shade. And we can just go ahead and clear whatever we have on this graph for now. So I'm just gonna click clear graph. And let's go ahead and hit tab. We're gonna use AI standard surface, okay? And we could just go ahead and name this, call this skin, enter. Okay, so we are going to plug in our maps here in the skin shader. We got our properties here. The specular, which is going to be this here, we're going to plug in our specular map on the color slot, okay? So this is our spec map and this is this is what's going to go into the color slot here, okay? We're also going to plug in if you guys go to subsurface drop down arrow the color map that we have created, we're going to plug that in into the subsurface color. Right now it is frozen but we later on we're gonna have to add a weight value there and that will unfreeze everything that we need to work on for the settings for the subsurface also we need to add our SSS map the SSS map is gonna go to the radius property for our subsurface settings here and last but not least is going to be the displacement map. And the displacement map is going to go to our, if we click on this AI standard node here, the surface S2G node, that's going to go, the displacement map that we have here is going to go onto the displacement material slot there. Okay. So let's go ahead and begin plugging in all the maps that we need on our skin shader here and also adjust any of the values that we need to adjust here okay for our base here we don't really need to mess with this at all let's just leave that alone okay so we are working on the specular now for the specular we're, we could just leave the weight at one okay that's going to be how strong the specularity will be the color map the color we're gonna add the the map that we have made right here click there and then click on file and he has created the file node here just click on the file node and click on this the folder here and go ahead and find your maps so i have my specular map here Okay, so I have saved the PSD as a TIFF file. So the TIFF file type is basically the standard in the film industry. And so this is the what I'm using right here. Okay, it's TIFF file is pretty good file to use because it's very uh, flexible in a lot of programs. Okay, if you have PSD file, you know, and you have to manipulate it, it only works with Photoshop. But yeah, TIFF file is the standard file type for film industry okay, for maps okay i'm just gonna go ahead and open that and also if you have if you have a psd file um it will it still works with maya but if you are planning to use the psd file just make sure that you merge all the layers otherwise it's gonna it could be a really big file that you're adding there but yeah i have the tiff right there and then going to the skin again and for our roughness here we gotta adjust our roughness we could set it to 0.5 okay so remember the smaller the value the smaller the value the tighter the highlight will be and the stronger the value the more spread out the highlight will be so it won't look glassy and our skin is not going to look glassy so 0.5 is fine all right ior is going to be 
So this is going to be the standard for our skin. IOR is 1.38. And if we go ahead and scroll down, we have the subsurface here, okay? Now, for the subsurface, we need to make sure that we turn our weight to a one value. So, there you go. And now, all the other settings below it have been turned on, okay? Subsurface color, we gotta go ahead and add our color map on the subsurface color. Click here. And go to file and click on the file node here and to the folder and go ahead and find your color map okay open okay oh and one more thing if you guys have plugged in the specular map let's go back to our specular file type here okay so this is our spec map that we have added. Okay? Uh, you need to make sure that for the color space, this is very important guys, make sure you set the color space to raw. Okay, So setting it to raw will allow, allow Maya to read that it's actually a black and white photo. Okay, And that's exactly what we need. For every black and white uh, image that you're going to add as a map in Maya here in the shader make sure that you set the color space to raw all right and also make sure you set alpha to alpha is luminance check that on okay yeah so yeah just make sure that you do that for the specular and for the file for our subsurface here yeah it's okay to just leave it as srgb that's exactly what we need for the red green blue channel all right Okay, and then the next thing that we need to add the uh, map for our SSS, the SSS map is going to go to the subsurface settings here and the radius slot. So let's go ahead and plug that in, file. Okay, and then go here. Let's go and find our SSS. Okay, since this is a colored map, we're just going to leave it as an sRGB. And back onto our skin shader node. For the scale here, this is going to be how much, how, how far the subsurface scattering will travel. Uh, one is too much, it will make your skin look too, too waxy. So we could set it between 0.1 or... 0.3 or even 0.4 depending on even it also depends on the scale of your character and also the color the skin tone of your character if you're having like a, a character that's a little bit that's more caucasian it's best to set it at a lower value 0.1 around 0.1 and also if you are doing a character that's a little bit on the darker skin maybe 0.3 or 0.4 all right i'm gonna set my to 0.4 for now and yeah and also this also this the scaling also depends on the size all right so mess around with this uh, i think if you go too too much like if you go over 0.5 it's gonna get too waxy so you want to add just enough enough scaling value here so that your character would not look like he's made out of concrete. You don't want his skin to made out of uh, made out of concrete. You don't want it to look like that. So yeah, mess around with the value there. For the type here, let's set it to random walk. Random walk will give us more of that uh, realistic look to our skin, where you see a little bit of grayish area and around the edges, greenish and grayish tones, in which what all the human skin has. Okay. And that's what we have. We have added our specular map. We have our color map. We have added our SSS map. And 
The last thing, uh, another thing that we need to do is we gotta go to the coat here. The coat is a layer on top of all other shading effects. Examples would be a clear coat layer for a car paint or the sheen layer for a skin material. So it's great for extra oily layer or wet skin. This is right here what we're gonna mess with. Uh, for the coat weight, we could just leave it at 0.3. For the color, leave it white. In roughness, we could go ahead and set this value to 0.6. IOR is going to be 1.38. Okay. And the last map that we need to add is going to be the displacement map. So if you guys go to the AI standard surface to SG, yeah, just click on that node and we got to add our displacement map here. Okay. So click there, file, and then we could go ahead and add the file, find our displacement map. And we have, okay, yeah, we have the displacement map for our head. So where are the head? Okay, so this is what I'm going to be using. And remember that if you are doing this, by default, the color space, once you add a displacement map, it sets it to raw right away okay but you know for the other maps like spec map you have to other black and white images you need to do it yourself you need to set the color space yourself yeah but it's good that with the displacement map it automatically goes to raw and also alpha is illuminance is luminance okay all right so we got those so this is going to be for our skin Let's go ahead and apply this skin shader onto our mesh. So, let's go ahead and select our character. Character head, right click, assign material selection. All right. And if we minimize this, we could so go ahead and check out how it looks like by let's check out let's turn on texture mode which is this here okay i am seeing this right now there is our color so looking at the texture here that we have for our skin i think the color map is a, a little too dark I think that yeah needs to be lighter so we could actually adjust the skin tone by going to our hyper shade and we could add if you go hit tab you could add remap remap HSV node so we could go ahead and connect do some Connect this remap HSV in between the the file here between this and onto the connection to the subsurface color. So let me show you what I'm talking about. So with the remap here, we could go ahead and click and drag this connection of our file onto the remap HSV. Okay, so now we have. this here and then the out color let's go ahead and plug this in back onto the subsurface all right and we got now a remap hsv that we could work with and if you click on that node we have hue saturation and value that we could adjust right within maya software okay so yeah i'm just gonna go ahead and adjust this I'm gonna the only thing that we need to adjust if you want to change the skin tone of your color of your color map value is a good place to work with okay so I'm just gonna click right in the middle of the graph here and then I'm going to 
click and drag. As you can see, it starts to get lighter. Okay, so the value is... Okay, I think something like this would be fine. Okay, a little bit. All right, so that's all good. And another thing that we need to do is in order for us to have a nice looking displacement map, we got to do something with our mesh here, okay? Otherwise, when we render this out, it would look like uh, yeah, it wouldn't, it wouldn't look like it's made out of skin. So this is important that we do this. Let's select our mesh here. And you know what? I'm going to just turn off the resolution gate for now. I'm going to go camera settings and no gate. So we got bigger space to work with. We could turn it on again later when we're about to do some rendering. Okay, so let's go ahead and isolate this. So we're only looking at the head for now uh there is a hole here okay on the face and also at the bottom in order for us to work better and for the skin shader to give us more accurate sss subsurface scattering it's best not to have any holes on our geometry here so let's go ahead and yeah fix this up let's go to oops okay right click and go to edge selection mode and let's go ahead and double click let's go ahead and select the edges the outer edges for the opening of the eye so i'm going to double click here so you could see i had selected the outer edge okay we could go ahead and We could okay. Actually, before we um, close this up, there is something I want to do here. I want to thicken up the the eyelids a bit. Okay, the lower part of the lid. I feel it's a little too thin. So it's always good to have extra width there so in case um, we need some more okay i'm gonna hold shift and double click and for this so i just selected the edges the outer edges for the lower lid from here to here okay and what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna just use the move tool and then just move it okay so we have a little bit more thickness there in the lid. Okay, also gonna do the same thing for this. Select here and zoom it in. Hold shift and double click. There you go. Okay, actually, I don't need this to be selected. And I'm just gonna move. Alright, a little bit more thickness in the lid there. Okay, I think that's good. Alright, now we could go ahead and select all the edges all around. Now you need to, yeah, select all the edges all around for the opening for the eye. Control E to extrude. And let's go extrude out. Um, actually click here and then extrude out. And you're gonna see this here because we have created new faces. If you're creating new polygons on something that's already unwrapped, this is bound to happen. But this is okay because um, this is not going to be shown anyway. It's going to be covered by the eyeballs. Okay. And Control e to extrude again. 
10. No good. Shrewd farther back. A little bit farther back. And for this one, let's just go ahead and fill the hole by going to mesh, fill hole. There you go. And just to make sure that we won't have any issues with the eyeballs, I could just go to mesh tools here, insert edge loop, and I'm going to add an extra edge there, and then just gonna scale it up. Okay, scale that up. Scale this up a bit too. Okay, and also for the face here, scale it up. And I'm also going to do the same thing for the other side here. Going to edge selection mode, double click, so it selects all around and the outer edge of the eye, control E, and click here. And then just go ahead and extrude out once, just a little bit. And control E again. Extrude out. Control A. And all the way out. Good scale. And just go to mesh, fill, hole. Um, could scale this bit, and also this one. Okay, and now we could do the bottom part. Go to right click, edge selection mode, double click on the edge here. So we have, we need to select the outer edge at the bottom. And we could go to our move tool, control E, and then click here, here, okay, why well, it's not doing it well. And then go ahead and move down. Okay, and let's go ahead and fill the whole mesh, fill the hole. There you go. So yeah, we don't want any opening there. And we could... Another thing that we have to do in order for the displacement map to work clean, let's go select our mesh and we gotta go to our R node. Okay, so you could find the Arnold drop down uh, menu here if you guys go to the attribute editor, okay? And then you're gonna find the the shape node, uh, the shape tab, okay? Where you have the tessellation attributes, mesh component display, and right below is gonna be the Arnold drop down. Click on that. And if you scroll down, you're gonna see subdivision. Click here. All right, this is very important. Make sure that you do this. Otherwise, your displacement map, the details are not going to show properly. So while you're on the subdivision, set it to Cat Clark, okay? This will give you a result that the details that you have uh, created in ZBrush will look just like how it looks in Maya, okay? And you also need to make sure that you set the iterations to a higher value so it will be subdivided some more when it's when it gives you the render okay so let's set it to four so if you have exported a subdivision of three or two then it's best to set it up at a higher value like four and you could also go to what you also need to do is go to displacement attributes and you're gonna see height here 
this is how strong the displacement map will be. The higher the value, the more stronger the details of your displacement map will take effect onto the mesh here. Okay, uh, a lower value will hit, give you more subtle effect. So it's best to render this out first to see what we're working with. And if we need to go ahead and crank it up, we could. Okay, um, there are two things that you need to work on if you want to adjust the displacement maps and make it more subtle or make it stronger. It's going to be the displacement map height here. And also, if you guys go to your skin shader, it's also if you guys go to the file here for the, your displacement, you're going to see alpha gain. Okay, This is also going to determine how strong your displacement map will be when you render. But I usually set the alpha gain to 1 and I increase the height value for my mesh. But yeah, let's go ahead and render this out to see how it will look like. Let's go to, I'm going to just set it to my cam 1. Okay, And I could just go ahead and turn off isolation. And what we could do is we could do a R node render view. Okay, go to R node, open uh, R node render view. And I will show you, um, this is a, this will give you a render similar to how when you did click this here, this gives you the render current frame. Uh, with this here, you have a few more options that you could mess with, which is pretty nice. And I'll show you after we do this. Go to open render view. Okay. And yeah, this, so this is basically what you will see for this. We, Arnold has its own built in render view. In order for us to, uh, what's good about this is it does it real time. Okay. So when you are adjusting things in your material, adjusting things for your material instead of having to always click on this render button just to see the actual result it will automatically do it real time it will modify how your material will look on the skin of the character as you adjust those settings this basically requires more power powerful computer more uh, memory and more powerful graphics card so yeah, if you guys are could, could handle this, if your computer can handle this, then use this here. If not, then I suggest that you use this step of render, the regular, good old, traditional render. Okay, so let's go ahead and do a little render with the Arnold render view. You could click on this play button here. I'm just going to pause this video and I'll get back to you guys. Okay, so after about 31 seconds, it's done rendering and this is how it looks like so far. And it is really noisy. Um, we have to adjust some settings so that it's not so noisy. But I actually like the color of the skin. I actually like this entire uh, look to his face. I like that. As I mentioned before, the very cool thing about this Arnold render view is you could do it real time. So. If I go to my material editor here where I have my skin shader and if I go ahead and go to my remap HSV which allows me to change alter the color of his skin tone I go to the value here and I let's say I adjust this here you will see as I adjust this it will automatically do its thing here and start um, updating the image to match our new settings here and this won't be possible if we are using this type of render the good old traditional render that Maya has but yeah with Arnold render it does require more computer power but if you your computer has that then you could definitely take advantage of that so if I go and just start adjusting you see how it's you could see it real time okay yeah, make it darker. See how it's starting to get darker. If I make it lighter, you see how it starts to take effect. Okay. So this is pretty nice. Pretty nice add-on for the render. OK, 
Okay, so I think I will stick to that one there. And it's now rendering again. And I'm just gonna go ahead and pause this video while it's doing its thing. And another thing that I want to show you here with Arnold Render is if we, got, we go to our settings, render settings here, and let's go to the AOV tab, you're going to see that there's the AOV browser. So in the render view, we could do a render of the beauty, but we could also do a render of our specular. So if you go to our specular here for the available AOVs, click on the specular and then we could click on this arrow here and then it will render out the specular for us. And we could also do SSS and add it there. So think of all the maps that you have added. And then you could put them in there to be rendered. Yeah. And so it's rendering right now, 33%. And I'll get back to you after this is rendered. I'm just going to pause this. Okay, so now if we go look at the drop down, we could now see the specular. So this is our specular map applied by itself on the mesh. And we also see the SSS. Okay. And then combined getter there's the beauty all right and we could also if you want to see other of other properties that came from the ai standard like maybe you could do you want to see the coat you could go ahead and add it and any other thing any other properties that came with the ai standard you could just add it to this active aovs and it will render it out for you and you could see it through here Okay. And you can see now if I go to coat, there's how our coat look like, which is basically a subtle form of the spec map. Okay. And both of these together, yeah, it creates the specular that we have now. Now, yeah, it, right now it's very it's really noisy. So what we could do to alleviate the noisiness, we go to our Arnold render tab here and the good thing about looking at each of these, you could also uh, go through each of these to figure out which is causing the noise. Okay, and for the most for the diffuse here, so if you want to know if the diffuse is causing the noise, you gotta have a diffuse here. So we could also add an AOV diffuse. So we could go to diffuse and add this diffuse on this side here in the active AOVs. And it's going to render it out for us. Okay, so we could go look at the diffused, which is just all black because we didn't really add a diffuse uh, color slot. So, because remember, we have added the color map on our subsurface color. So that's why it doesn't show on the diffuse. So, this right here. Yeah, this is a pretty cool tool because you could see each of those maps and you could target which is causing the noise. It could be the the it could be the coat, it could be the specular, it could be the SSS, and you could remedy that by going to the Arnold renderer. So let's say you know the specular is causing the issue, so you could, you know, crank it up to three or four. Just keep in mind that the higher the value the more time it will take to render things out. So what I usually do is I like to set this value here to a higher value, which is the camera AAA. This usually fixes the problem and I set it to seven. And the rest, I leave it at two, two, two. And maybe later on, we could crank it up some more as we go through the tutorial. Okay. And I'm gonna leave it to beauty. Now I feel like my computer right now it's really making a lot of noise so at this point it, it might look like it's gonna crash. So what I'm gonna do I'm just gonna go ahead and X this out. You have to know your computer and what your computer can handle. Okay whatever view whatever render you see on the open Arnold render view you could see it through 
also rendering here using that okay and if you feel like it starts to get really laggy your computer then just stick with this one okay all right and i think i i do want to just use this for now maybe on i'll go back to the open arnold view but i do want to show you this in case your computer will be able to use and work with this here okay so i am going to do a uh, larger render this I'm gonna go to the settings here going to common and I want to go scroll down right now the image size is HD 540 I do wanna render out HD 1080 okay so that way I could see better how our displacement map is our effect is affecting the mesh and I'm just gonna go ahead and do a little render and this will take time, so I'm gonna pause the video and I'll get back to you guys again. Okay, so that took about 6 minutes the render time, 6 minutes and 45 seconds. I think, looking at this, I, I could crank up the displacement map just a little bit more. So that we could have a little bit more of the details pop out. So I'm gonna select the mesh and for the displacement attributes. So remember for... You know, you see the Arnold drop down, and then you're gonna see the displacement attributes here. So that's on the geo shape here that we have. And for the height, I could crank it up to 1.5. And let's see how that looks like. I'm gonna go click on the open render view. And I don't wanna click on this button again to re render the entire thing because that means I'm gonna have to wait for another 6 minutes and 45 seconds. So, uh, what I could do is I could just render out a portion of the face to see how it looks like, the new added value for the displacement. So I'm just going to click and drag, do a region render, and I'm going to click on this button right here, which is render region, and it will render whatever is on this rectangular shape. Okay, so rather than rendering the entire thing, I'm just rendering out a portion, which will take a lot faster to render. Okay, so that actually looked more enhanced and that's good. And I'm, I'm going to save out, keep this image so I could compare it to the compare and contrast the renders. I'm going to click here so it's going to save this current image. And I'm also going to just go ahead and render out uh, maybe this, yeah, this portion here in render region. So we could see the before and after image. You could see a little bit of it. So to the right, that's how it looks. Take a look at this area and if I go to the left. And I hope you guys could see this in the video, but I could see it in mine. Okay, there's the parts a little showing more, okay? Yeah, so I want you guys to, you know, mess around with the height displacement attributes here to see the type of, if you want to enhance your displacement map, if you want to enhance the pores, crank this up. Alright, so I've shown you guys how to create your skin shader and how to apply maps on it. And I also have shown you um, a basic, I showed you guys the Arnold render view, which, you know, if you guys have a... Uh, incredible whole computer then you guys could use this one continue using that one okay but yeah so this is how you guys create the skin shader for your character in the next video we are gonna move on and maybe do some more modifications here i'm looking at my character here i think i could probably adjust the eyelid here so that it's a little bit the eyes a little bit more open so in the video i'm gonna make some adjustment here and there